he does best. Thank you. Well, anybody that was a climate change skeptic only has to hop between the two rooms to realise we've got the Arctic Circle next door and we've got the tropical places. Thanks for coming along. Um, you know, collaboration and picking up on the theme that uh, our chairman just acknowledged, collaboration really is the driving force in supply chain and supply chain excellence. And this afternoon we're going to talk a bit about that, although we have about 40 minutes, so it's going to be on steroids and we're going to try and cover as much as we possibly cover. Um, for those of you that are as old as me and remember this, in 1964, Bob Dylan wrote a song, The Times Are Changing. And at that time, that song captured what was a, uh, a period of change within the world, and rapidly evolving change, might I add, colour TVs, etc., etc. But five decades on, things are changing even faster and faster, and most of our communication these days it, it happens on a, a palm platter or a handheld or goodness knows what next. And supply chain is trying to catch up with that marvel of technology as a strategy, as are our customers. And from 1960s, when we thought about logistics as physical distribution, to this concept of supply chain management, we've now got this enormous visible corporate uh, emphasis around actually aligning our supply chain to our customers. And I think most importantly, the theme around that today is the one that we want to talk about. How do we do that? How do we define it? How do we, we take what is uh, you know, channel position managers and out enable them to have the tools to enable them to grow their business. And, and someone once said to me, a recent supply chain director said, um, you know, people are either the bridge or the barrier. It's a powerful statement and we say it all the time, I think Jim, you use the words higher fire. Um, they're either on board the train or they're not. And that's only a partial solution to it. So this afternoon, look, we've got a, a number of prominent experts and supply chain directors joining us this afternoon. I'd like to invite them to stay. So without further ado, Sunil Narang. Sunil's been the VP and GM of the Business Services Group for Kodak for a number of years in their fruit packaging solutions. He holds a couple of different roles in that and we'll, we'll see those in your guide. But predominantly he's responsible for the execution of strategy that enables the customers to grow. Um, Jim Lin, most well known to most of us. Jim's a, a very well known supply chain expert in Asia. He's been with Hewlett Packard, more recently with BZ Cousins, and we're delighted to have him on board. He's led numerous transformation projects and has been through the alignment of strategy to people uh, more extensively than even myself. Um, and Chetan Kamara, so uh, Pena Picard. So if you want to come and join us, um, Chetan is very, very experienced across all markets, in the, in the international markets. He worked across a variety of industries, including high tech consumer electronics, healthcare, logistics, and food and beverage. So he's got a wealth of experience, experience, and transcends the different sectors that we operate in. Um, we're going to go really horsepower, guys. I know we had a strategy before we uh, came up, but this is strategy on the run. Um, I'm going to start with you, yourself, uh, Sunil. I mean, we've got this topic, which is, you know, how big do you want to make it? Define, sell, and manage uh, change within your organization's supply chain. But I guess, how do you do that at the very high level yeah, what, is, what are the key elements that are important to enabling that? Okay, um, I think selling, as it goes in the word selling, right? You have to make your point and convince other people to do that, right? And right stakeholder who will sponsor your initiative, etc. Uh, so first of all, I, I'm a big believer of outside-in approach, right? Um, I would say first thing we have to make sure while selling um, this kind of a change initiative is look at that what you are changing, how does it matter for the overall company strategy and uh, addressing the market um, and the customers, what, what value it brings to the customers. Right? Uh, once you have that, particularly from top, at the board level, at the CEO level, you if you click right on that area, you will get the right starting, right kickoff, and right support. Okay, uh, and of course there are a number of other things I'll let uh, other people add onto that. Jim, do you want to pick up on that? I mean, I know you're very big on this collaboration issue, but you know one of the things we know about business is that you know it's very easy to have misalignment between functions. And I mean, in your experience, and you've dealt multi geographies, how do you deal with conflict between the various functions of business when you are trying to drive supply chain? Yeah, it's it's getting like an octopus pool and all sorts and uh, I think importantly you, need, you really need to know the end in mind. I think first thing first is even before you, you start you know, trying to change things and change people's mindsets, culture, I, I think it's very important the communication part is, is first the most important. How do you uh, 
simplify your strategy? How do you translate the strategy into goals that people will believe in you? So it's it's about going on a ship with them, bringing them to the water to drink. I think that's that's the utmost. And also, uh, you know, if they, there is trouble locally, right? Whether is it, uh, you know, I deal with uh, West Africa, Nigeria, I deal with Johannesburg, and I'm sitting in Singapore. No, you you literally have to fly there for uh, 18 hours flight for three days, and then you come back. Maybe the strategy isn't even, and you know, even uh, handheld together. But at least you know the person on the face, and you know what he's talking about. And we're talking about. Um, some of these uh, cultures where they are, they are very mature organizations in Australia or New Zealand, it takes more than just a meeting, it takes sometimes months or weeks to convince them of, of uh, sharing the same dreams and vision. Yeah, I'm going to come to you and give you just a final words. I mean, Jim just raised an important point, face-to-face -face time. How does that, I mean, you use the example of jumping on a plane traveling 18 hours. It's not easy to justify that to your boss but and say, actually, I need to go and spend half an hour getting some face time with this person. How do you do that? I mean, what is the value? I think before we even go on to the change that we need to drive, we need to understand why we need to drive that change. That's more important. At the CEO level, at the board level, we need to, and they need to understand the value of this change that we need to bring about. Why supply chain? Why change and supply chain? It is a big question these days. Uh, to ask the board to Putting money behind supply chain is the most difficult task. To so, so I'm just going to jump in there. So you're the second person. That's no way to do the board. You keep talking about board. How do you get your board on board with changes necessary? How, how do you convince them that actually this is the right direction to take? Particularly if they're much more forward-facing and operations are really there as a servant to to our customer. How do you do that? I think the value of supply chain sitting on the board is becoming more and more prominent. And why is that? Because they understand that the basic functions, which are like managing warehouses, transportation, downstream customer operations, are sitting with sales. Now that's traditional. The backend supply, procurement, etc., sitting with manufacturing. Now that's traditional. Right? What is the core function of manufacturing? It's to make the right product of the right quality. If the manufacturing is engaged in doing other things like procurement, uh, chasing trucks for supplies from the vendors, etc., they are not able to focus on making the right product. And similarly, on the front end, the sales guy's job is to sell the product, not to chase the trucks, not to chase the orders, etc. And, all. and if the management is shown that value, that the time that we can free up of manufacturing and sales, in delivering to the core values of what they need to do, I think the growth and the profitability focus comes in. And that's what you know excites the board. So that's about education of the board, actually educating them where those push points are. Um, I'm just going to come to you, Sil, for, with a quick question. But before I do, I just want to make a point that I, I forgot to do on the Tulski, and that is we've only got about 40 minutes. So from a, from a Q&A perspective, um, <laughs> You know, jump in when you want. If you've got a question, uh, don't wait for me to sort of come to you at the end because I'll forget to come to you and you'll probably forget the question. So swing your hands about, get my attention, I've got my back to a couple of you, but jump up and put your hand up and Fazi down here will grab it and give me a, a heads up. But jump in with any questions. Um, Sunil, it's an interesting point. You've had experience on both sides of the fence. You've been in a, a forward-facing commercial role with the customer. You've also been in a back-end operational role. How important is it for any supply chain change process to actually collaborate from a front end and then reverse backwards? Is, is it important for the salespeople to drive that initiative? Because often that's where it falls down, isn't it? Correct. Uh, no, that's a very, very good point. Actually, uh, we often see when we are only focused on one side or other, right? We do not understand, we do not uh, put ourselves in other person's shoes and see the complete picture, right? We always have a partial picture. Uh, from an overall business point of view, uh, if we want support of the senior management board and uh, CEOs, etc., we have to uh, really uh, get them end-to-end uh, -end kind of a proposal, right? In supply chain, now, what is value? A lot of times you must have heard the jargons like um, um, supply chain need to be faster, better, cheaper, right? That's what everybody wants. And how do you get that, right? You you cannot get sometimes or some aspects, you can get all three if you are lucky. Some aspects you will get one of them or two of them, right? And you have to optimize it. 
and you have to see it in conjunction with not just from a supply chain point of view as a silo that what is best for supply chain cost and metrics etc but overall business metric for example um, it might be uh, looking that air freighting stuff is very expensive right versus uh, what is the cost of manufacturing product what is the cost of inventory right and you have to look at end to end in these kind of a things so with the back end collaboration front end collaboration and optimize the whole thing and say yeah sometimes it, it is overall cheaper to air freight for certain products but when you come across those barriers you use the word collaboration there which is yeah. the word I, I opened with how do you tear down the walls of collaboration because we, we all we all want to collaborate by nature but often we go through that process and we find resistance. I mean, how do you really rip that apart and actually get alignment through the company? Is that about your brand messaging and the education as Jim was talking about earlier? I, I think that, that's absolutely necessary. In any change management, uh, talking, we have to spend the first phase of it talking, communication, and marketing that change, right? Why it is important for it and show the people who are really involved or who, will, who we will depend on to drive the change uh, why they should do it, how their metrics is confirmed. I'm a big believer that human behavior really is driven by what each person is measured on, right? And first thing I look at at a big picture when I see this kind of a disconnect, how do we align the metrics first? Do we have a common metrics, one common metric across which would necessitate each of the person to look at the same objective, bigger objective? And then they have the individual metric, right? 